Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I thought we'd switch things up a bit from my normal kind of long tutorial and I thought we'd sit down and just walk through some data science project ideas. As I'm making this video, we're in the middle of a pretty crazy time with all that's going on with COVID-19 around the world. First and foremost, I hope that everyone's staying safe and healthy. Uh, definitely follow whatever your local government's telling you to do. I know I've been at home a lot recently and uh, it's been tough at times, but I've also trying to make the most of of being here and you know for me it gives me an opportunity to make more videos and uh, experiment with different types of videos. A lot of us have time to kind of take on maybe an extra project that we've been meaning to but have kind of put off you know we're kind of forced to be at home right now. I think it's a good time to walk through some cool data science projects. So how this video is gonna work is that we're gonna walk through about eight different project ideas. For each idea, I'm gonna introduce the problem pretty quickly and then give you all sorts of resources, videos, blogs, code snippets that are useful in solving that project and building that project. All these resources will be found in the description. So for any task that you're specifically interested in, check the description and I'll have all sorts of resources uh, listed there that will help you out with the project. Before we get started, I wanna just list out two rules that I really think you should follow if you wanna get the most out of a data science project. And the first rule is don't do a project just because you think it will look good on your resume. If you wanna get a lot out of a data science project, you're gonna need to be genuinely interested in the topic and you know each person has their different their own preferences you know something that I'm interested in might not be very interesting to you if you're not interested in the project you're probably not gonna work too much on it you're probably not gonna build up your skills too too much and the second rule is that a good data science project should make you work on various skills in data science a relatively small percentage of your time is actually spent building models you're gonna spend much higher percentage of the time scraping data from the web, uh, cleaning it, processing it, building an architecture around, you know, deploying it. The honestly, the more marketable skills often are those skills surrounding the actual model. All right, let's get started. Okay, first idea is very appropriate for the time. And it was also requested by a couple of my Twitter followers and that is to play around with COVID-19 data. I think the best place to start for this is to go to the Johns Hopkins GitHub page and play around with the data that they have made available there. I did this and I made a quick little script that allows you to graph the number of confirmed cases in different places. So I thought this was a good starting point. Uh, next, if you wanna get a little bit more advanced, I recommend going to Kaggle and they have several different coronavirus related challenges available right now. The first challenge is a NLP and text mining challenge. This can get pretty advanced, but what I found really useful when trying to attack this is that Centex has already made a video uh, walking through his first hour doing this challenge. And then if you want some inspiration for what you can kind of do and some cool things to aspire to, I recommend checking out three blue, one browns simulations that he did. Okay, the next idea is also probably pretty relevant for a lot of people. If you're like me, you've been maybe killing a decent amount of your time playing different types of board games. And sometimes maybe you don't have another person to play against. So what I suggest as another fun data science project idea is to build your own board game AI. And we can even extend this further to be, you know, any sort of game AI. And this kind of hits on more of the machine learning part of data science, but I think it's a very fun project to try out because you can real time play against your AI and see if it's working or not. I have several different resources for getting started with this. I did a video overviewing different types of board game AIs a while back, which I'll link to. I actually also made a video where we implemented Minimax, the Minimax algorithm for Connect4. And then if you want to kind of veer more into the state of the art neural network based AIs, I recommend a couple different tutorials. The first I saw was on reinforcement learning using the game of Snake as an example. I thought this was a cool little blog post and I think you can follow it to get some ideas on how you could maybe incorporate reinforcement learning into uh, a project. And then the other article that I found cool was on Alpha Zero for chess and that was a you know more sophisticated AI and kind of more modern approach. Also for fun and a good way to kill an hour and a half, it, recently AlphaGo by DeepMind, they posted a full documentary on AI that beat the top, the world's top Go players. That's on YouTube now and it's completely free to watch. So definitely check out that. Another project idea is to draw some inspiration from Reddit. So if you go to reddit.com, 
Uh, and then you go to the data is beautiful thread. This is one of my favorite threads on the site. Uh, you can kind of scroll through this and see all sorts of cool visualizations that people have created. So if you, you know, see one you particularly like, so I think this one's pretty cool. Uh, you can click on it. And one thing that's super useful is that on all these posts, you get this stickied post by the data, data is beautiful bot that lists the author's citations. So as you can see, the source of their data, I guess, was right here. So it was from the US Census Bureau. So all sorts of cool data you could use for your own projects here. Um, and then they also tell you that they use mapchart.net to create that visualization. So if you wanted to create something similar, you could go to mapchart.net and play around with the interface here. And I recommend that you kind of just scroll through the data is beautiful and find stuff that you're particularly interested in. Uh, so like, oh, this graph right here on the S&P 500 recoveries looks kind of cool. Uh, you know, maybe you look into how that was created. And once again, we can click the author's citations. And as we can see here, this is actually kind of cool. This person actually used matplotlib and Python uh, to create this graph and they actually listed their repository right here. So the takeaway here is that there's a lot of cool kind of visualizations that you can draw inspiration from. What I recommend is scroll through this, find something you like, try to build a project that's similar using maybe a similar data set, using similar skills. And one real benefit of something like this is these types of visualizations make really cool portfolio type projects. Uh, this is very easy to show on a you know, a personal web page and it looks pretty impressive and it's clear that you know how to work with data and visualize it. The next project idea is to build a text sentiment analysis tool. So basically what this means is to build a model that can identify whether or not text has a positive or negative connotation. So for example, if uh, I looked at all the comments on one of my YouTube videos, if someone said this video sucks, that would return negative from the model. And if someone said, oh wow, thanks Keith, this video was super helpful, that would return positive from the model. I actually did a full tutorial on this in my real world machine learning tutorial with scikit-learn. So if you wanna see the entire process to build this tool, you can check out that video. Uh, and then I recommend building that out and making it more powerful. Some ways to do that are to maybe use more data. I also didn't do a lot of the kind of basic text processing that you could do. So, you know, stripping out punctuation, you could also use bigrams instead of unigrams terms. So basically do your modeling on pairs of words instead of just a single word. You can also utilize kind of more state of the art NLP techniques. So I recommend learning about transformers if you're interested in kind of being at the top of the NLP world, specifically the BERT paper. Uh, this is a super, super powerful model and kind of the, probably the most cited NLP model right now. And so I recommend reading into that. And then if you want to try to apply that to this text sentiment analysis tool, you can use the Spacey library, which makes extracting those features very accessible. Once you're confident with your model, one thing you could do is create some sort of dashboard with your tool. So maybe you use the YouTube API to extract all of the comments from a YouTuber's channel and you feed them into your model to see whether or not on average, the comments are positive or negative. And this might be fun to compare different YouTubers to one another. So the next project idea is doing something related to sports analysis. And there's a lot of different ways you can go with a project like this. One concrete task that I think is fun is trying to programmatically build the optimal fantasy sports team. So I think this is a good task because it kind of makes you go full pipeline of data science. You start with nothing and you have to scrape some data off the web. And then once you have the data, you're trying to find meaning. You're trying to find different ways you can analyze players to figure out who's the best for their team. And then ultimately, once you've done that analysis, you extract the meaning and ultimately make your decision of who you're gonna draft. One resource I thought would be helpful for me to include in this is that a lot of the sports analysis projects require you to scrape data. So I figured I would include some code to do that. So I went to basketballreference.com and I scraped a table on the 2019-2020 uh, stats. And whenever you're scraping a table, the way you're usually gonna go about it is to right click on an element in the table and click inspect. This will open up the HTML source code and once you're in the HTML source code view, you're gonna to wanna to find the entire table. So here we have the table uh, and you see it's all highlighted uh, on the screen. 
once you have that all highlighted, you're going to want to identify the properties here. So we see this is a table with class uh, here and also an ID that is found here. And we're going to use that in our Python script that ultimately web scrapes this. Uh, and I think the library that's easiest to do this with is Beautiful Soup. So I use Beautiful Soup to scrape all of this information. The next project idea I have is to build a stock trading bot. So to build a bot that automatically buys and sells stocks. Uh, I think this is a fun project because it kind of combines two different skill sets. You know, you have to build up knowledge about financial markets and how all that works. And you also have to have skills, Python data science skills. And you can kind of leverage those two skills together and develop strategies to hopefully buy low and sell high. One caveat I will say regarding this project is whenever you're putting money into a project, it's kind of a dangerous territory. And the thing that I think is important to say is do not put more money than you're willing to lose entirely into a stock trading bot. I'll also say that even though putting money into something is risky, I think the positives outweigh the negatives in this case, because when you're putting your money into it, and maybe you're just putting $10, $15 in it, you're invested now in the project and you're gonna kind of force yourself to wanna to learn more about finance, more about Python to build the best trading strategies possible. And I think that outweighs the risk of losing some money. To get you started on this project, you should probably check out this alpaca.markets site. They provide a web API to buy and sell stocks as well as get all sorts of market information. I've tried it out a bit and I was very happy with what I've seen so far. The sign up process is pretty easy. They do make you sign a couple forms and you also have to put a small deposit in before you can start trading, but the trades are commission free. The API docs are well written. And in the worst case scenario that you've maybe bought some stocks using the API, but you have no idea how to sell them and you're maybe they're going down, the dashboard of Alpaca gives you a option to manually buy or sell stocks. So you can always, worst case scenario, sell stocks in the dashboard. For the seventh data science project idea, we're gonna go to Kaggle. And here you can find a cool challenge on house pricing predictions. So basically the idea behind this Kaggle competition is you have all sorts of data on houses. You know, you have their square footage, you have if they have like a porch or not, the square footage of the porch, you know, whether they have a driveway, what type of neighborhood they're in. Uh, you have all this information and with it, you're supposed to predict the price of the house. Uh, and this is a great challenge to learn more about regression and, and to develop your regression techniques and also getting more comfortable working with Python pandas and CSV data. One thing that's nice with this competition is that there's all sorts of people that have already done it. So you can look at some notebooks that have already been submitted or the other great option is they actually have tutorials for this and you can click on like this comprehensive data of exploration with Python link and they'll walk you through getting started with this challenge and all sorts of things that you need to know to start predicting these prices on your own. For the eighth and final data science project idea, I'm gonna make kind of a bit of a stretch and I'm gonna just call it miscellaneous Kaggle challenges. And I just thought for this final project idea, I would walk through how I would go about finding cool things to work on. So I would get to the Kaggle homepage and then I would go to data over here in the left. Uh, and then with this data, I might look at most votes over all time and look through all of these different data sets to find something that I think is particularly interesting. You know, one thing that I think is pretty cool is, you know, New York City, Airbnb, open data. It's so like this data set gives you all sorts of information on Airbnb listings. One cool project you might start with is it gives you the latitude and longitude of these Airbnb listings. Maybe you try to visualize all of the listings in New York uh, using this data set. That would be one fun task to play around with. If you ever need inspiration, one thing that's great about Kaggle too is that you can click on kernels and you can find all sorts of people that have already done analysis on this data. And so that can help you kind of learn how to work on the data yourself. Another suggestion if you're having trouble getting started with Kaggle challenges is to check out my real world data science video, which I will link to in the description. I don't directly do a Kaggle challenge in this video, but it, I make it a very realistic approach to taking a data set and asking yourself all sorts of business-like questions about the data set and actually using the data to answer those questions. So I think it's a good tutorial to get you to the point where you probably can go to Kaggle and play around with this data on your own and answer your own questions. 
All right, with that, I think we're gonna end this video here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you found it informative and uh, also feel a little bit inspired to work on a data science project now. If you did enjoy this video, it'd mean a lot if you throw it a thumbs up. And also let me know in the comments if uh, any of these ideas were particularly interesting to you. I wanna make a full walkthrough video on one of them and I definitely will give preference to the most requested, most commented uh, ideas. My current plan is to make a neural network tutorial next, and then shortly after that, I'll probably make the full data science walkthrough video. Make sure to subscribe to not miss either of those. Also, if you wanna stay up to date on everything that I'm doing, make sure to check out my Instagram and Twitter. I think that's all I have. Until next time, everyone, peace out.